stream, press OK. Okay, we're live. All right, awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this month's Tech Talk. Uh, Wikimedia Tech Talks take place monthly, and we invite members of the community to join us and share their knowledge about topics that are relevant to the Wikimedia technical community. If you're interested in giving a talk of your own, please see the Wikimedia Technical Talks page for more details. Today, we are delighted to have Amir Sarah Badani, a software engineer at Wikimedia Deutschland. Amir will be sharing information about the technology that makes Wikida Wikidata work. Amir's talk is going to be around 45 minutes long. We'll have some time at the end for questions and answers. And you can add your questions to either the YouTube stream or the Office channel on IRC. Uh, feel free to submit questions, and we'll make sure um, to ask Amir at the end of the talk. Thanks. On to you, Amir. Hello, uh, my name is Amir, and uh, today I'm, I'm here to present about Wikidata and uh, how it works uh, internally. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so today I want to talk about uh, Wikidata and its techni uh, technical um, things behind it. Uh, a, a quick introduction. I'm I'm Sarah Badani. Uh, I'm a, a software engineer at Wikimedia Deutschland uh, in the Wikidata team. Um, I've been staff for two years now. Uh, so uh, as a, like a true Wikipedian, I want to first of all give you a table of content uh, before moving forward. Uh, I want to say, so in this talk, we're going to first talk about some concepts of Wikidata that are needed to understand the uh, technical uh, things behind it. And then I will talk a little bit about the code structure of Wikidata, uh, how it uh, uh, organized in, uh, inside. Uh, I won't go too into details for it. And then I will talk about the presentations and the APIs that Wikibase and the software behind Wikidata provides <coughs> for users. Uh, and then I will talk about the secondary data storage of the information. And a little bit will be going to the entity usage. And then uh, I will talk a little bit of front end stack, and if there's any, uh, and then I will talk about the miscellaneous parts that I couldn't squeeze into other parts, uh, and then uh, I will quickly tell you what's going to change about Wikidata and its technical uh, on the technical layer. Um, so first, let me start with uh, concepts. Uh, let's explain uh, what some concepts that are important to Wik Wikidata. Uh, so first of all, Wikibase is a software behind Wikidata. Uh, in a way that MediaWiki is uh, the software behind Wikipedia. Um, Wikibase on its own is a MediaWiki extension, uh, which uh, it's actually it's not one MediaWiki extension, several, uh, but we'll get to that later. Uh, it's a Wikibase, we have uh, two things in a concept of Wikibase. There is first is Wikibase repo, and the second thing is Wikibase client. Uh, Wikibase repo is the place that you can add, store the data, uh, Wikibase uh, client is the part that uh, uses the data. Uh, so of course, uh, um, a, a repo can be client of its own, so it uses its own data. Um, and currently in Wikimedia Foundation uh, infrastructure production, we have two repos. One is Wikidata, the other one is Commons, uh, uh, but every other wiki is basically the client of uh, these repos. Um, the concept of federation, uh, so it brings the concept of federation when Wikibase first got started, uh, kind of repo, uh, only, we had only one repo and lots of clients, uh, but then we, this uh, structured data and comments happened and we were, thought, we were thinking like we need to have several repos that could uh, a client can could reach to and get, use the data. Uh, this is called a uh, federation. Um, so technically it can cause collisions. For example, if I want to know what Q42 is, uh, should I, where should I get it from Wikidata or comments? So the way that it works right now is that we have entity types that are uh, defined per uh, repo. So uh, Wikidata handles items and properties and comments handles media info. Um, this way don't, they don't collide. Um, so we bring us to the concept of entities. Entities are simply put things, uh, um, and they are 
several type of entities. The one that are in the wiki base itself are item and property. Um, properties are, you, uh, uh, are things that describe the item. And uh, we use a data model to uh, describe an entity. Uh, um, the, so the part, the first part is terms. Uh, terms is label, description, and aliases. There are three different types of terms. Um, and they have a statements that are being used only on items uh, and, and properties, uh, but also describe the uh, entity itself. Uh, and site links, site links are only used in the item, so they can connect it to uh, Wikipedia and clients using that. Um, so these are like each part of an entity, you can actually define other types of entities. Uh, lots of people know item and property, but lots of people don't know about Lexeme and Media Info that are also entities. Um, Lexeme is also in Wikidata only, and it is basically dictionary entries. If you assume like items are entries in an encyclopedia, uh, Lexeme is an entry in a dictionary. And uh, for because it's a, like a different uh, entity, it has a different data model. It shares some data models like statements, but it doesn't uh, share the same things. Uh, necessarily, like for example, it doesn't have labels or descriptions. Media info is basically similar to items, but for one per uh, image, and that is in comments, uh, and that's the thing that uh, powers the structured data and comments. Uh, basically, structured data and comments is a new entity type. Um, so this is a quick uh, overview of uh, item of Alan Turing, uh, Q7251. Uh, you, if you go to it and uh, try to look at it, this is like site links, statements. Uh, so statements are here, site links are here. Um, and the whole thing is called terms. And uh, it shows you uh, three things, label, description, and aliases. Uh, it has a different name. Um, uh, so now let's dive into the code structure. So first of all, Wikibase is not an extension, it's, it's several extensions. Um, for a repo, you enable several extensions like uh, Wikibase repository and Wikibase client because the client can be repository of its own. Uh, Wikibase view is also an extension of uh, Wikibase um, repository. Uh, it, it, um, let me say this way. These are go with together. Uh, a repository also is a view. Um, and media info is uh, dedicated for comments and it's not enabled anywhere else. Um, Wikibase series search here, if you look at uh, Wikibase series search, it's actually uh, the thing that enables search uh, in a better way. Um, we get to that later. And uh, Wikibase view and repository with the, uh, are together. Lib is the, actually the extension that is uh, shared between client and repo. It's for the sake of having a shared uh, code between these two. Um, for a client, it's a little bit simpler. So we have a client, we have Lexeme, uh, we have lib and badges. Um, lib, as I said, is shared between client uh, and repo, so it's uh, enabled everywhere. Um, and Lexeme uh, is the one that enables Lexeme, but you can have different modes. It has a, it's an, in English Wikipedia, it's enabled on a client mode, not a repo mode. Um, and Wikimedia badges, it's the one that shows the very tiny uh, links to the site links that are featured. Um, if you go to their Wikibase extension uh, on MediaWiki, uh, the, the codes are here. Uh, you can see the codes are actually being used here. The other parts are not related to the code. Um, even the tests here are actually seem linked to another thing. Uh, so view is part of repo uh, and client is uh, on its own, but a lib is shared between these two and data access is also part of lib. Uh, data, data access is trying to take some parts of it out and trying to, and it handles uh, accessing to data from client to repo. Uh, so let's get to the talk about representations and APIs inside uh, our system. So one thing, important thing to notice about Wikidata and Wikibase is that it's just an extension. So on its core, it's just another extension that lets you have uh, in pages in JSON in a dedicated namespace, and that's all. It doesn't do very crazy things for you. 
And if you can see if this is in production, I went to and asked get text uh, Wikidata, Wikidata Wiki and asked for an item of uh, Alan Turing, and it gave me a JSON representation. And this is the part that all of other part of truth comes out. So this is a one uh, place that we can store the data, and everything else is secondary. Um, this explains how you can edit. So you basically can change things here and there. Um, but no one goes and directly edits the JSON. Everything happens through API, except uh, for rollbacks and restore, but uh, we don't get to that. Um, so when you have this uh, JSON part, you can build all sorts of uh, presentations out of it. One uh, important representation is HTML for humans. Uh, if you want to see this, uh, you, if you can go to wiki special entity data slash q7251 and you get there and it depends on your language you can get a different uh, inf get a different uh, view uh, because they, they, you can build different uh, views based on from the JSON representation um, and also JSON API gives you some data for this um, so it basically, it's written something that's similar to the internal storage uh, thing that I showed to you, but it's not the same. It's a little bit uh, different. Uh, and it also can give you RDF. Uh, RDF um, uh, is basically the way that powers uh, data query service and Sparkle, uh, that you want to use, uh, query Wikidata um, because uh, Sparkle is a graph database. And it understands the, R, um, the RDF language. RDF has two formats. Uh, one is a turtle or TTL. You can access it through this uh, and get the data out of this. Uh, the other one is JSON LD. Um, you can also access this, but a place graph uses the TTL. Also, uh, if you're writing an extension on top of Wikibase, you can also access um, the items. Using uh, there is a singleton called Wikibase repo. You can get the singleton and get the entity lookup, and get the entity lookup gives you uh, the information, uh, builds you an object of uh, that item, and you can use that item. Um, so, but if you want to, for example, use the data of Wikidata, and every time we need to load it, uh, we would call the external storage and load the page and build this JSON file. It just wouldn't scale. Uh, so we have to have several layers of uh, caching on secondary data storage to be able to use this. Um, so first, we, I start with Termistore. Um, Termistore is basically uh, just a, uh, right now it's a table that has um, entity ID, uh, the type, and description, and the terms. So you can, for example, when you're rendering a page with HTML and using it uh, from another item, you don't need to load the uh, and load the whole new item, you just look at this database and look at the data. The problem with this table is that it's really, really old. Uh, it has more than 2 billion rows, and it's uh, very denormalized. We are replacing it with a new system, uh, which is like a combination of six tables. Um, and then it's uh, at one order of magnitude smaller. Also, the thing is, uh, this table is uh, being read a lot, it's like uh, no orders of millions per minute. Uh, so we put lots of cache on top of it, uh, all sorts of ways. Also, it's too big to fit into any cache. So there's a dedicated cache that has that hot data. There is some parts of it are in APCU cache. The other parts are in memcached. Um, but it actually reduces 99% of the reads on this table. Um, so we have the parser cache to have the data. So it, uh, it stores HTML representation uh, of the entities that it's true to, and it just plugs in and is basically the same as the wiki parser cache. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, fragmented by language, which means uh, you won't get the same thing uh, if you're using different languages. So you can have uh, language agnostic representations. Uh, also, it expires like, in 30 days. Um, and also we have, and it, it has some placeholders and some parts that it gets hydrated uh, in the server-side rendering through the server-side rendering or the client-side rendering. Um, so we have another uh, storage of that, uh, which is called Braze Graph. Uh, this is the part that enables Wikidata query service and through um, getting the data from Wikidata, the first storage, and it stores it into Wikidata query service nodes. Uh, so 
as I said, this, uh, for example, when you query Wikidata query service, you're not hitting Wikidata directly at all. You're hitting Wikidata query service nodes, uh, WDQS nodes in production, and those have uh, their own version of Wikidata, which is the optimized version of the RDF output of uh, each entity. It gets updated through um, uh, something called, uh, I forgot its name, but it's, uh, so this is the infrastructure of that. Uh, the picture, you can find the picture for this here, sorry, uh, uh, in the link that I uh, put here, but this is the way that it gets updated. So the real, the storage for data in app server is here, and then uh, there's a RDF interface that it under both understands, and we have query service importer that gets the stuff from the dumper, and then put it into the RDF triple store, which is Brady's graph right now, and then people can query that graph database. Um, and we have Elasticsearch, which is a completely different presentation of uh, the data that we have, uh, and it stores it in Elastic. Uh, it, enables, it is enabled by Wikibase Serious Search um, extension, and you can just not install it if you have a third party installation of Wikibase uh, and you don't want to have uh, uh, go through all of this stuff with Elastic. You just can use the term store. Um, but also, uh, when you hit the special, special search or the API module called WB Search Entities, uh, you get to that system and you hit with uh, elastic search instead of the actual data um, also this is not a representation but this is also a collection of other representation is dumps uh, we have full weekly dumps uh, that also incrementally are uh, daily dumps uh, that of the difference between every day and they are available in two formats uh, a is rdf and b is json uh, for everyone to use and a lot of people use this um, also sometimes it's being used when there's um <clears throat> query services behind and they use it to warm up the cache um, so now i want to talk about entity usage so you know how this secondary strategy works i want to tell you how entity usage works inside uh, wikidata so there are several types of entity usage and several parts that you can use entity usage. Uh, one part is on repo when you're using another item. So this is uh, all entering a word uh, item and you see it's like named after and it says all entering. In, in the back end, it actually is Q7, Q7251. But in front end, if you want to show it to you, it needs to get the label for that item for you in English. So it hits the term store and gets the value for you Um And also in a special operator, you can use this. Um, on client, there's two types of data usage here. Uh, the first type is site link usage. When, uh, if you, this is article of South Coast Telescope. Uh, if you go to the, this article, there is in the sidebar, there is languages and list of languages that uh, this article exists in. Uh, this list is being maintained by Wikidata because centrally it holds all of the site links. Um, the difference is that Cyclings actually gets its data propagated to the clients, so it uh, uses the data inside the language links table. Uh, so this is gets copied uh, everywhere, uh, but the data, the main thing is stored in Wikidata. Um, but other types of data usage, for example, if what's part of it and what's the coordinates, uh, like uh, it says what's the coordinate of soft coast telescope, uh, if you want to know what's this coordinate, it gets the data from Wikidata. And also, even if you want to reparse the page of uh, this page in English Wikipedia, it goes and direct connects uh, to the Wikidata, loads that item, gets its value, and put it in here. So it uh, doesn't have any data inside clients. It doesn't get uh, store any data unless in parser, parser cache, but beside parser cache, the data is not copied to the Wikidata client on what data is being used. Uh, and you can use uh, this data usage in the info box that I showed to you through parser functions that we introduced uh, and Lua functions. Uh, there's a very big help out for that. Uh, some wikis like uh, Bosque Wikipedia use this very extensively, like most of their um, info boxes just come gets the data from Wikidata instead of um, having it locally. Uh, so we need to have this. Uh, you have this problem of cache invalidation in our system. So, for example, if someone uh, tries to edit and change the data in Wikidata, this needs to be reflected to the 
item of source for telescope, but it's not easy to do that because we don't know what's uh, using this data. So we need to have this tracking uh, of entity usage. Uh, we need to build this system. So it happens in two ways. Uh, first is client side. So each client has this table that's sort of called WBC entity usage. Uh, WBC uh, C is for client. Um, and you say, OK, tell me which pages of uh, this wiki is using this item. And it gives me uh, all of the page IDs. And also, it gives me an aspect uh, that saying, oh, I'm using this part of this entity. And uh, T is for title, site is for site link, O is for other, which means aliases. And label is uh, L for label. And this is a modifier saying this is label in Basque. And C is for statements uh, or claims. Um, this way, uh, we can know that uh, when something changes and I, for example, label in Chinese change, I don't want the uh, item for this to get reparsed because uh, it doesn't affect this item and uh, these pages uh, because they are not using this label. Uh, so it's a little bit granular. And if you make it too granular, it becomes uh, so super big because uh, the table will grow too big. So sometimes we just um, per aggregate them to smaller things. So for example, C here can have a modifier saying, oh, C.P1, and using only property number one. Uh, but when it uses more than 20, it just aggregates them to a general C. And oh, for example, if it's using L with lots of languages, it would also uh, aggregate it to one general L and would get reports if there is any change coming for uh, labels. Um, on the repo side, we have this uh, table called WB changes subscription, and then it says, okay, these wikis are subscribing to this entity, and they need to be notified if a change comes into this entity. Um, and then when, it, when they get notified, they check the change and their um, serialization of that change uh, against their system uh, and the aspects that they are using, and then they decide, okay, I need to reparse this page or not. Um, Basically, this is uh, what I told you is basically reflected in here. Uh, there's a, like a long uh, documentation of it that I linked here as well. Uh, you can use it uh, and read it more if you're interested. But this is how it usually change dispatching works. Um, change dispatching doesn't cause the purge only. It also can log into the watch list and our, uh, basically puts a new record in recent changes table, which gets reflected to a watch list and recent changes. Um, so people would notice, OK, someone is analyzing this item in Wikidata because uh, I'm getting my watches changed for on Wikidata. Um, a purge, as I said, the only reason that you're purging because it gets an, it automatically has to go and load the new data from Wikidata. We are not sending the data to the client. Um, and also, you can use it in another repo, and that's called Federation, uh, some parts of Federation. Uh, so if you go to this picture, there's like a structured data and has the depicts um, its statements here. And it says, OK, it's depicting all Turing. This is the HTML representation of me, this uh, entity. If you get to the JSON representation, you will see, oh, there's their statements. There is a P, which is this is a depicted statement, uh, depict uh, property. And then you see the ID is Q7251, um, which is the, the way that you can use this. Um, so let me get to the front end stack a little bit. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so on the front end, it's mostly a jQuery UI widget. It's a little bit old. I'm sorry about that. But um, we are working on it to improve this. Um, but it's been written a really long time ago. And there's a start. And it gets uh, hooked into MediaWiki resource loader if someone loads the item. Uh, and the PHP injects something called wikibase.ui.entityview.init module. Uh, wikibase.ui.entityview.init module loads um, something called uh, wikibase.viewFactoryFactory, uh, which can be overridden between diff with different entity types. Uh, for example, Lexim has a com on its own. And Wikibase view factory factory looks it up and says, OK, which type of, uh, if it's a read mode only, like if I'm the page is protected, I just go with wikibase that uh, read mode uh, factory um, and if it's not a just a read it's not protected you can edit it it will go to the controller view factory controller view factory <clears throat> loads uh, a bunch of other modules uh, so let me explain to you 
uh, this is the dependency graph. So basically, uh, this is entity, the, the part that I determined there. It's actually entity view in it. Um, so back then, like three months ago, if you wanted to visit a page of Wikidata, uh, entity view in it loads basically all other modules in listed here um, based on going through the, all of this dependency graph. We improved this recently, uh, and uh, it's now this which is makes it a little bit um, more understandable. Um, and yeah. Uh, so now other thing that we are working on is to actually modernize the front end and we do not uh, try to use this jQuery uh, UI old systems. Uh, one of the things that we are doing is using Vue.js and TypeScript and we are working on server-side rendering. You can see this in um, items in the mobile view if you want to go to visit um, the items in Wikidata and mobile view, you will see there has a, like a very cleaner, nicer uh, view of the terms. Uh, we call this term box SSR, and it uses a services that is already in Kubernetes. Um, and so SSR is the way that this is just a server. It's a service in Kubernetes that talks to media wiki. And if the browser wants it and it tries to get the entity, um, um, HTML for the user. Let me explain it to you this way. And uh, this is the better way that you can understand this. Um, so someone goes to Q123 and it says, okay, Q123 in English as a media wiki PHP called service side rendering. It's like, tell me more about uh, HTML of this page. And the service side rendering, uh, on the other hand, calls the media wiki a PHP um, behind Varnish. Uh, that was the JSON representation. I want to know the entity. And it gets the entity data, and then also tries to get the content languages and messages. Uh, and then it tries to render it and gives the HTML parts of the term box. If, if I can show it to you here, this is the HTML parts, not everywhere else. Um, and then it will get put to in the parser cache and then return to the user. And there are some other the parts of Wikidata that uh, Wikidata team uh, handles and maintains. Um, there is one thing is um, uh, Wikibase quality constraints. Wikibase quality constraints actually has uh, some ways to show the user that are problems with uh, in, in statements that are inside the Wikidata. They say um, uh, it's an API that API requests a Sparkle and um, Sparkle tells them, OK, there are two uh, valid, two items that are, have the same exact same value. For example, in this case that I'm ex exampling here, um, so when you want to render the page, uh, it has its own way of caching it. Um, we also have a, our own system of uh, analytics refinery um, that is similar to the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, and it's uh, basically a set of Chrome jobs that are run in MSTATS 1007. Um, some of them are every minute, some of them are daily uh, and different times, and they uh, extract some data and send it to uh, StatsD, uh, and then I will be, they, we will use it in Grafana. We also have property suggester. Property suggester extension is uh, another extension. Also, I forgot to say, we keep it called constraints is also an extension. Uh, property suggester has its own tables, and when you want to add a new um, in New statements, you want to know what property it has. Um, so it suggests you the properties that are more likely to be used. Um, we have another extension called Article Placeholder. It's only used in uh, client wikis. Uh, some client wikis is not enabled in all the client wikis. Um, it uh, basically gives you a very small uh, placeholder of an article if it doesn't exist and if you search in there. Uh, I think the biggest wiki is enabled is Russian Wikipedia, but I'm not sure. I can need to double check it. Um, and also, there is uh, server frameworks. We don't maintain those. These are maintained by the community, but these are the parts that actually makes uh, enables lots of users to make lots of edits into Wikidata because Wikidata currently has more than one billion edits on it. So it uh, takes some time. Uh, lots of it has been done through the automated systems that have been harvesting data or uh, getting data from other data sources. Um, one of them is Quick Statements. Uh, it's written by Magnus, and uh, it was all sorts of semi or automated tools. 
Uh, PyVK with a set of Py Python scripts, and um, that enables bots to run uh, scripts. And Wikidata Integrator is self-explanatory. It integrates with Wikidata. Uh, um, these are maintained by the community. Uh, and we are going to change things. Um, there is several changes that I can mention for now, is that uh, we are completely dropping the old uh, term store, uh, which is the WB terms table. We are replacing it with a big, uh, like six tables that are normalized and they connect to each other. Um, as I said, it's going to make it um, one order of magnitude smaller. Uh, it makes it way more usable for users. Uh, and there's a problem with Wikidata query service uh, backend that uh, BlazeGraph is uh, growing too large. Uh, Community Foundation Search Platform team is working on it. Uh, and the other hand, also we are improving uh, the front end of Wikidata to um, actually use the more modern uh, libraries and frameworks and uh, use Vue.js um, for our systems. Um, on the future, uh, like, and also there's another future features that are going to go live soon. Uh, one of them is client editing that is called Wikidata Bridge. Uh, so, if you go to an inbox in Wikipedia, you see, for example, South Pole Telescope, you see the value. If you want to edit that value, you have to go to Wikidata, and you might not know how Wikidata works. So Wikidata Bridge is basically a front-end app that uh, hooks into that link when you want to edit. And when you want to edit this, uh, when you click on it, it shows you a pop-up inside Wikipedia, and then you will be able to edit uh, Wikidata uh, through Wikipedia instead of going to Wikidata and trying to change things. Um, um, there's uh, some documentation on uh, things that's explained here. Uh, there is a docs directory on the Git, uh, GitHub repo Git repository. Uh, there is a Wikidata page in Wikitech that has more information on uh, things that are inside the uh, for production systems that are configuration that are a very uh, specific to the Community Foundation infrastructure. And if you want to run a third party installation, uh, Wikibase page is also very good in MediaWiki.org. Um, uh, thank you for letting me um, giving this talk. Uh, it would be very appreciate this if you tell me about questions and if there's any questions so far. Thanks, Amir. Um, I don't actually see any questions on the um, on the YouTube stream yet or on IRC, but um, we'll take this time to ask the audience if there are any questions. Um, feel free to add them to the IRC channel now or to the YouTube channel. Um, and if you do not uh, have questions now, but you want to ask later, um, you can always email um, myself or Amir. I am feeling very few questions, and by that I mean I am not seeing any. <laughs> so we'll give the YouTube stream uh, one more moment. Oh, uh, Magnus Salgo wants to ask, um, can we ask about Wikibase? Um, sure. Um, I cannot. I don't. I don't know if I know everything. What we keep is on top of my head, but sure. Uh, sure, Magnus, and I'll answer here too. Um, okay. So we'll see if there's a a question there. I want to go ahead and give Magnus just a moment to ask because sometimes the live stream runs behind a little bit. Okay. So the question is, what is the status of reusing the ontology from Wikibase using Wikidata? Um, so, 
Oh, well, I think uh, what you're talking about, Magnus, is uh, basically federation on a level that uh, um, other systems that uh, don't have access to database of Wikidata can uh, use the data. Be because right now, if you want to be a repo and a client, or like several repos, you cannot uh, you cannot do this unless you have access to and the database of each other. So you cannot have uh, translate wiki um, use our systems because translate wiki is inside is not inside our production. Um, so I I think uh, the work on it uh, started. Uh, I cannot tell you when it's going to end, but uh, hopefully we will get to this at mid 2020 or end of 2020. Um, but I cannot give you any promises. Uh, uh, but this is on our radar and this is in our roadmap. <coughs> awesome, thank you. We'll give one more um, short minute to the YouTube stream. I'm not seeing anything on IRC, um, but that was a good question. And then uh, once again, if we have any more that come up after this talk, I know, Amir, that you're a uh, number of hours um, ahead, kind of out of the business day, too. So I'm sure folks will probably watch the talk uh, where you're at a little bit later. Um, and we more than, uh, we're more than happy to welcome questions after the fact. Awesome. Magnus says, thank you. Um, so since we don't have any further questions, I'm going to go ahead and um, say thank you to Amir for talking with us today. Um, we really appreciated this walk through Wikidata um, and just an invitation to the rest of the uh, technical community. Um, these talks are for everyone. If you have a topic that you are interested in talking about uh, or information that you're interested in sharing, uh, we'd be more than happy to have you reach out to us and um, schedule you for a tech talk. So um, thank you so much, Amir, and uh, we'll be talking uh, I'll be sending out announcements about the next talk shortly. Thank you. Thank you for having me.